Hey everyone, this is Ross. Today's video, I uh, want to talk to you guys about grow bags or fabric pots. Um, I'd like to uh, give you guys like a little bit of an update on this alternative. It's the most common alternative to plastic. Um, you know, when I first started, I actually was using fabric pots. I didn't have anyone really, I didn't know anyone that had any experience with fabric pots. Um, it seemed worth trying, you know, the um, the biggest concern I had was that they didn't have the most durability and a lot of these websites and brands and products you know they they give you a certain estimated time that these things will kind of degrade and all that and to be honest with you uh, I found them actually to be very durable um, so six years in I haven't actually had one of them degrade on me or rip on me unless I mistakenly did it myself um, in fact, if you were to compare them actually to plastic, I do break plastic pots actually by accident more than I break or rip the, the fabric pots. Um, we did do a video, as you can see right here, we did a video on this very topic about a year and a half ago, and the video got cut short, and I didn't really get a chance to really fully explain my thought processes on, on these pots. Also, in this video, I want to kind of break down a couple more tips and tricks for plastic pots if you're going to go that route, because uh, I do believe there is some nice benefits to both. Um, you know, like the fabric obviously is going to degrade. It's not going to last on the earth nearly as long. Um, they're usually cheaper. Um, you know, there's a lot of benefits, but in terms of growing, in, depending on where you live, um, I think there's some really big benefits to using one or the other. And it also depends on what you're growing um, as well. So I wouldn't um, necessarily rush into this. I had a friend kind of inspire this video, uh, my friend Leon, who was asking about this. And I kind of just wanted to put my thoughts together again to assess this topic. Because um, my opinions have changed since this video. Um, that I am looking at right here, this one that we did a year and a half ago. Um, so let's kind of break break it down real quick. Um, you know, as I said, the fabric, let's say the fabric, we'll talk about the pros, they are actually durable. They do degrade, they're cheaper. Um, and depending on how you look at it, they do actually um, uh, produce a pretty high quality root system. That is the one big benefit of these grow bags. That's why everyone really likes them. Whereas in the plastic, the roots will circle around the pot and eventually the tree will kill itself, you know, depending on what it is. Maybe it doesn't have enough nutrients, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, root pruning can obviously come into that and you can alleviate that whole issue completely depending on what it is you're growing. But, um, it does actually, it really does produce a high quality root system. So if I was like selling plants, I think, and I had to keep them in a pot long term and I was going to sell them to somebody, I think putting them in, in grow bags would actually be the best scenario. Um, because you're going to end up giving that person the best quality root system that you can offer. And then when they transplant that into, let's say, another pot or the ground specifically, uh, it's such a big difference, I think, than planting a tree that's been fully root bound. There's so many people who complain about that and you can really obviously attribute so many negative things um, to that, you know? So that's why a lot of people say tease the roots and, you know, do all kinds of weird things to the roots. So I think there's a lot of value in, in the grow bag in that sense. Um, the other value point here is that they, they can dry out a little bit quicker. Um, so maybe if you guys, which to me is honestly a negative, I think maybe there is some situation maybe somewhere, like let's say I am growing blueberries or I'm growing some kind of annual vegetable and I need the soil to be, well, if I need the soil to be wet at all times, because the blueberry, if they dry out, at any point they're pretty much done you know they're 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 a goner so what i like to do is always keep them wet and although the fabric pot will 
will dry out quicker than the plastic will, it's also easier for them to get wet. Um, so if it's raining outside, or so if you live in a rainy place like I do, um, the rain hits the side of the pots and also the ground as well as wet and it really wicks all that water into the soil from the outside of the pot and the bottom of the pot, not just the top. So in a sense, you actually are, you could make an argument that it's keeping them more wet depending on where you live. But in general, it is drying out your pots a bit more. The outer inch all the way around the, the circle of the pot is getting dried out pretty consistently. And what I've noticed is that it's not necessarily that the air is pruning the roots, is that the, the outside of the pot is just dry. And because it's dry, the roots aren't going there and they're not growing there. Um, or if they are getting there, then the, those root ends are dying um, because it's dry, not really because there's airflow going in there. Um, I guess that could be potentially, uh, you know, part of it, but that's not really. It seemed like what's happening. It's not really the case. Um, so I guess that's probably a pretty big misconception with with grow bags is that the air is really doing it. But uh, all the the trees that I've taken out of these bags. Um, have one had great root systems but two the outside layer was pretty dry and it didn't look like they were being air pruned at all um what i will say is that i don't like what i don't like about the grow bags is that some of the smaller sized things the smaller size pots depending on what you're growing in them for a long-term purpose doesn't do well i'd recommend this size here which you're looking at is it like a is like a seven gallon but it says it, it's a 10 but it's really like a 7.5 um so realistically if i was going to grow a, a you know a good size or a, a fruit tree that i wanted to bear a lot of fruit i would certainly put them in the biggest grow bag possible the other issue with that though is that they are quite heavy that way um, they're definitely it seems like heavier than um plastic pots because they have more soil in them or at least it seems like you can get more soil in them. Um, I guess that, that really is kind of, you can kind of ignore that point if you were, you know, if you had the exact same amount of soil, then it's really just up to the water content in the soil. But uh, it seems like my really large grow bags are extremely heavy um, with the same medium. Um, so it's probably just a difference in the, the soil quantity that's in there. Um, and of course the water that goes along with that. Um, so getting the bag off is really difficult when I transplant them. So what I end up doing is I, I'll probably end up breaking some roots because a lot of the roots will stick to the sides of the pot and grow into the fabric on the bottom and on the bottom parts of the side all the way around the pot. So I have to, most situations actually cut the bag and I can't reuse it. Um, I have reused a number of them. You know, it's not like I never can or never have. But in a lot of situations, especially the smaller sized pots, the smaller sized grow bags, it's better to cut it, I find. Um, or a, a tree that doesn't have the most mature root system, it's better for transplant shock reasons to, uh, to cut the bag. The smaller sized pots, as I mentioned, like a fig as an example, in a five gallon grow bag, really doesn't do anything it's really quite small there's not enough soil the soil dries out too quickly because if you think about it it's not just that the bag as an example is a 10 gallon right it says it's labeled as a 10 but if you do the dimensions of it it's actually more like a 7.5 but it's really if you if you go you step further the outside inch of the pot nothing can grow in that outside inch so it's even less than probably a 7.5. Um, so you end up with a tree that's maybe taking up a lot of space that doesn't really give you the the performance that you're looking for. Um, so it can be quite strange. I would just recommend, as a general rule, go as big as you can with the grow bags. Um, you know, I definitely think there's a number of fruit trees I would just not grow at all in a five gallon size pot, plastic or fabric. But uh, it definitely seems like the smaller the bag, the quicker they dry out and the worse 
that whole drying out process is, right? You got a larger bag, it's going to take a lot longer for all that soil in the bag to dry out. But if it's, you know, a half gallon size pot, a one gallon or up to a five, it could be a pretty quick process. And um, I ended up killing a number of trees that way without really realizing that was the case. So overall, I don't really recommend them um, for things that really don't want to get dried out. However, there is the issue again of consistent soil moisture because a consistent soil moisture a lot of times is going to give you the, the most optimal fruit quality, right? We don't want to be over watering things. We don't want to be over under watering things. We want to be on the, the lower side of the water spectrum in terms of bricks and fruit quality, but we want that number to be consistent. We want that level of soil moisture to be consistent and it's not going to be consistent in these grow bags. It's just very difficult to maintain because uh, they're constantly drying out um, or they're constantly getting rained on, right? If you live where I live, then they're getting rained on and they're actually soaked and they're then they're very wet and um, it's just a giant fluctuation and you end up with a lot of uh, poor quality fruit. So that's, uh, that's my biggest, out of all the concerns in terms of these grow bags, that is the number one concern is that the fruit quality suffers. You, here's the, the bottom line I think is how I put it, is that you get a, a healthier tree or a healthier plant, but you have a lower fruit quality. So it's like, which one of these do you would you prefer? Um, you also have a cheaper bag but you then have to pay a higher water bill. So, um, you know, to me, the, the fabric don't really make, it doesn't make sense. And I can see a number of scenarios. There's a number of situations where these would be perfect and they're amazing and it's a product that should exist and people should use it. But for my personal preferences, uh, it's not something that I'm gonna be using in the future. Even the small one gallon size pots I don't prefer. I really like the the plastic in those as well. Like for the plants that I'm rooting cuttings in, or starting seedlings in, um, and then getting those seedlings to a bigger size, I I actually just like the plastic. I really do. Um, so it's a bit strange. I think you know there's a lot of uh, pros and cons with this. A lot of weird situations where you could say, you know, this is better or this is better, and there's no real clear cut answer. I think which really unfortunately doesn't really help you guys, but think about these pots in terms of, and think about what you're growing in these pots in terms of the consistent soil moisture. Also, does it matter if it dries out? Does it matter if it gets too wet? Um, you know, those are, I think the bigger, the bigger issues here, but just in general with pots, you know, you can get, like I, I talked about, I think in maybe this video here or another video, we talked about where to get these pots. And one of the places that you can get plastic that will actually make them free is a landscape company. Um, a local landscape company will have all these extra pots and you can just get rid of them. Or they'll get rid of them. They keep them, so a lot of these people, instead of just dumping them, um, they'll keep them and people will come by and pick them up and you can get a huge... This photo right here is pretty much ev evidence of it, all these giant pots that I was able to get for free. Um, so for me, I'm not paying for any pots anymore. This is, um, I think, the best way to do it. Get the plastic. They're the best just for my personal uses, for fruit quality. Um, if I was a nursery and I was going to be growing these plants for the purpose of, uh, you know, let's say um, selling these plants, grow bags all the way right but then again there's a higher cost in water so it's it's there's always a trade-off with these different things you know it never it's never really the same no matter what it is in gardening it's never the same thing for everybody it's never the same thing there's a million ways to do the same thing um, and if you you can't really as we talked about in other other videos about garden myths for those of you guys who saw our videos on garden myths you can't apply a blanket statement to everything in gardening. It's just the myths are are ridiculous in themselves because 
first off, they could be wrong, right? It could be a myth that's wrong, which is, I guess, technically then a myth, right? But then there could be the truths that are also wrong and, and cannot be really applied to everybody. So, um, yeah, it's a weird one. I think it's a weird topic. It's a, a topic that for some reason gets a lot of attention. Um, I would recommend the color. Really think about the color when deciding what pot that you want. Color is so important. If you live in a warm place, go with something that's lighter in color that's not going to absorb as much heat. If you live in a cold place, get a pot that's black, right? Also, these handles are really nice on the fabric pots. This really goes a long way for moving them around. It's a lot easier. For pot size, think about the heaviest pot you could pick up comfortably um, and go at that size. That's really my recommendation. But for all fruit trees, I personally just recommend getting yourself a uh, at least something in a 10 gallon or, ab or above. Uh, the places that you can get these things are pretty, it's pretty simple. Um, I've had a number of different brands. Um, I think I've had these right here before and these have lasted me six years. These ones here on Amazon, I'm not sure if it's the same thing anymore. You never know. They could have changed something in their, in their, um, their packaging, but it was this, this particular thing here. I've bought some of these since. You can also go on. You can go on a greenhouse mega store here. This is a great place to get them. Uh, that's high quality. They have them at different sizes. Um, they have them at, at different um, qualities as well as not just greenhouse mega store, but AM Leo has a bunch of fabric pots. And they have probably even a better selection. This is not the perfect thing here, but uh, you can see they got the handles. They have a picture of the bag and they even tell you how long it lasts. If I can find, um, I want to find this for you guys really quickly here. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's in nursery pots. Here we go. You can go into I don't think it's the root the degradable ones. It probably is this here. I think this is it right here, yeah. If I'm not mistaken. Hmm. This doesn't look right, but there's a there's a kangaroo brand. Is this it? Can I zoom in here on this photo? Yeah, I think this they're called root pouches and they're of this kangaroo brand. And that's basically the pot here that is really quite durable. Um, and they have different ratings on them. Depending on where you guys get them, they'll tell you how long they last and what they can do and um, yeah I think it's this is a great source for these things you can even get free shipping from AM Leo every once in a while um, yeah so that's kind of where to get these things guys you may have to I just thought of that you may have to get some kind of reservoir or some kind of saucer underneath the the fabric pot if you want to keep them constantly wet but you know that that then can maybe even bring in mosquitoes and give you all kinds of other issues and it's a lot of work and you know it's not the prettiest thing in the world so yeah I want to thank you guys here for watching this one our little talk here on the grow bags we'll talk to you guys soon I hope you enjoyed this check us out on fig uh, figboss.com check out our listings on figbid we have a number of listings now for sale and some are ending actually tonight for auction but we have a number of them that are for buy it now prices we're offering you guys for the holidays a 10% off discount you just have to message me before you check out uh, before you pay through PayPal message me the promo code Ross on Figbid and you guys will get the 10% off I hope everybody has a great holiday um, 
I know Hanukkah just started. Christmas is almost here. New Year's is almost here. I hope everybody's happy, healthy, and um, yeah, is enjoying enjoying their time with their family. I'll see you guys later, all right? Take care, guys.